first we need some tea because we're about to get into it. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. That's good. This isn't a confessional. Um, this isn't something I'm openly struggling with now because that'd be a weird way to go get a camera and say, Hey guys, I'm struggling with this. Yeah. Uh, this is something God has redeemed me from and transformed me from. So it's kind of like a testimonio, testi testimonial. All throughout my teenage, young adult years, I struggled with lust, with sexual desire, not knowing how to handle that. With uh, I struggled with lust entwined with pleasure, it, with pornography. I was exposed to it at such a young age. I believe it started with a magazine and then next thing you know it's an image on a computer and then it's these scenes in a movie. Bunch of scenes in a movie these days, right? And then pornography. And all of these struggles were behind closed doors. No one had to know about it. I, lit, I put on the Christian face. I was a pastor's daughter. Everyone saw me as a goody two-shoes, but this was my deep, dark secret that no one knew and no one had to know about it. Here's the problem. I had these sexual desires and a normal human seeks out pleasure. A normal human has these desires and wants, but I didn't know what to do with it. All I knew was that, yes, sex is for marriage, and that's what I was hit with and I, I knew nothing else. I had no idea what to do. Yeah, this is bad for you, but I had no idea what else to do. So I did what I did behind closed doors. What I wish I had at that time was a community that I could openly talk about these struggles with. A community that I trust and I felt like I could be open about these things. I wish I had a spiritual mentor that wasn't my parents because it would be weird to share this with my parents. Very weird. Um... That's what I wish I had. I wish I had access to, or at least knew about the Christian books that openly talk about these things and tell you how we can defeat these things in the power of Jesus Christ. I wish I knew about that, but I didn't. So I just struggled with it. No one had to know. I'm not gonna get into the scientific data of why pornography is so detrimental because there are tons of data on on that. I'm not going to get into how it damaged my view of all things sex, all things pleasure, and my damage on what I should do in the midst of temptation. But I'm going to tell you this. This is where it all changed. For me, it all changed when I received Jesus Christ. His grace, amazing grace, and I let him transform for me. I allowed him to take over my life. All these nook and crannies, all these dusty, dark parts of my life and letting him transform me and heal me from that. That's where real transformation happened. And here's the shocking thing. Even though I'm sharing a sin that I struggled with, there are different ways that I can struggle with it now as a married woman. And there are different sins that I struggle with today as a Christian. Dogs, you need to chill. There's a giant window there and they're just being crazy. Here's why I brought this up. You have to know that as a Christian, there will be sins that you struggle with. There will be sins that your neighbor Christian will struggle with as well. It is not your place to condemn them and to judge them. When Jesus saved you, he didn't look at your qualifications, your lifestyle, and your thoughts to how holy they are and how you are. No, he didn't do that at all. He picks the messed up, the screw-ups, the fallouts, all of that. Like, there might be actually some Christians who have worse tempers and attitudes and ideologies than your fellow non-believer friend. The Bible says how our heart is sick. It's all turned away from God. And if you don't realize you're spiritually sick, I pray that God reveals that to you and shows you how sick, how broken we are without Jesus. He's the only one that can piece us together and make us whole. He's the only one that can renew us. But I truly do believe that God wants to transform and radically change every aspect, every nook and cranny of our lives, even the sides that we just keep in the dusty corner. If you're an unbeliever watching this, that's not just by mere coincidence that feeling has been there. 
God is calling you and he's pursuing you and he wants you. Salvation is for all. But just like how it is all Jesus who changes us, it is also Jesus who calls us, who finds us, who pursues us to want to accept him as our Lord and Savior. It's all Jesus. There's nothing in our willpower. I did nothing. And so that's why I was sitting in my room thinking, I really need to make this video even if the possibility of a student coming across this video, which I really hope that doesn't happen. 